We've seen him, we've seen him before. Yeah, George Carlin. Him. He's a funny guy. He's very scared. intelligent. Very intricate thinking guy. Large brain. Yeah. He said, if you wear a monkey suit, you that was that was him. That was so funny. That was bad. Was that That's why he time. said we should split he the states that. up. Yeah, yeah, he said something about a mon- oh, rabbit suit. It wasn't a monkey. I think it was like some type of animal. He suit. said we should split the states up and make one place like a hunting ground or something. Oh like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. He was like that should be the prison or something like that. Yeah, that's something insane. like that. I don't know, man. Oh, wow. But that we've done. Really uh, I think perfect. maybe. That was intricate as fuck. you're wrong, we imprisoned. You would know. Yeah, he has an interesting mind, man. Okay, we got. Maybe we did like one or two of him. I thought we did this. He was wearing the same thing. Yeah, it's the same. Uh, well, I actually, it was it that rain, that wind ball. Uh, oh, yeah, ball. yeah, it actually might be the same one, but it's, it's not the same exact one though. He was talking about a different clip of, uh, from the. Y'all did one of him though. I did one of him too. Yeah, yeah, we did. I never did one. It was like uh, I mean, six hundred k, man. Look at my favorite boy right there, Chance Blinger. It's your favorite boy. It's your my boy, favorite man. boy. Uh, 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 oh, oh, actually, we've done uh, three of George's. Uh, right, cool. Balance we, on the budget. Cool uh, uh, advertising and BS uh, and some culture issues. The advertising and BS was the one we were just talking about. Yeah, yeah, that was hilarious. All right, let's go ahead and get it. Well, Ross, is your first time? Yeah, I never heard of this guy. I don't like words that hide the truth. I don't like words that conceal reality. I don't like euphemisms or euphemistic language. And American English is loaded with euphemisms because Americans have a lot of trouble dealing with reality. Americans have trouble facing the truth. So they invent the kind of a soft language. What? Euphemism is English is loaded. Well, let my friends. Let's, let's uh, get the definition. Let my friends a give us a definition here. It's a mild or indirect word or expression substituted for one considered to be too hard or harsh or blunt when referring to something unpleasant. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes so sense. So it's a polite term or an alternative for something. Okay. I don't like words that hide the truth. I don't like words that conceal reality. I don't like euphemisms or euphemistic language. And American English is loaded with euphemisms because Americans have a lot of trouble dealing with reality. Americans have trouble facing the truth. So they invent a kind of a soft language to protect themselves from it. And it gets worse with every generation. For some reason, it just keeps getting worse. I'll give you an example of that. There's a condition in combat. Most people know about it. It's when a fighting person's nervous system has been stressed to its absolute peak and maximum, can't take any more input. The nervous system has either snapped or is about to snap. In the First World War, that condition was called shell shock. Simple, honest, direct language. Two syllables, shell shock. Almost sounds like the guns themselves. That was 70 years ago. Then a whole generation went by, and the Second World War came along, and we, the very same combat condition was called battle fatigue. Four syllables now, takes a little longer to say, doesn't seem to hurt as much. Fatigue is a nicer word than shock. Shell shock. Battle fatigue. <laughs> then we had the war in Korea in 1950. Madison Avenue was riding high by that time, and the very same combat condition was called operational exhaustion. <laughs> hey, you're up to eight syllables now. And the humanity has been squeezed completely out of the phrase. It's totally sterile now. Operational exhaustion. Sounds like something that might happen to your car. <laughs> then, of course, came the war in Vietnam, which has only been over for about 16 or 17 years. And thanks to the lies and deceit surrounding that war, I guess it's no surprise that the very same condition was called post-traumatic stress disorder. <laughs> Still eight syllables, but we've added a hyphen. And the pain is completely buried under jargon. Post-traumatic stress disorder. I'll bet you, if we'd have still been calling it shell shock, some of those Vietnam veterans might have gotten the attention they needed at the time. Just did a video on that. We did something. Good job, George. But it didn't happen. And one of the reasons, one of the reasons is because we were using that soft language, that language that takes the life out of life. And it is a function of time. It does keep getting worse. Give you another example. Sometime during my life, sometime during my life, toilet paper became bathroom tissue. (laughs) I wasn't notified of this. No one asked me if I agreed with it. It just happened. Toilet paper became bathroom tissue. 
Sneakers became running shoes. False teeth became dental appliances. Medicine became medication. Information became directory assistance. The dump became the landfill. Car crashes became automobile accidents. Partly cloudy became partly sunny. <laughs> Motels became motor lodges. House trailers became mobile homes. Used cars became previously owned transportation. <laughs> room service became guest room dining. And constipation became occasional irregularity. When I was a little kid, if I got sick, they wanted me to go to the hospital and see the doctor. Now they want me to go to a health maintenance organization or a wellness center to consult a health care delivery professional. <laughs> Poor people used to live in slums. Now the economically disadvantaged occupy substandard housing in the inner cities. <laughs> and they're broke. They're broke. They don't have a negative cash flow position. They're because a lot of them were fired. You know, fired, management wanted to curtail redundancies in the human resources area. So many people are no longer viable members of the workforce. Smart. Smug, greedy, well-fed white people have invented a language to conceal their sins. It's as simple as that. The CIA doesn't kill anybody anymore. They neutralize people. <laughs> or they depopulate the area. The government doesn't lie and engages in disinformation. The Pentagon actually measures nuclear radiation in something they call sunshine units. Israeli murderers are called commandos. Arab commandos are called terrorists. Contra killers are called freedom fighters. Well, if crime fighters fight crime and firefighters fight fire, what do freedom fighters fight? They never mention that part of it to us, do they? Never mention that part of it. And some of this stuff is just silly, we know, we all know that. Like on the airlines, they say they want to pre-board. Well, what the hell is pre-board? What does that mean? <laughs> to get on before you get on? <laughs> that is crazy. They say they're going to pre-board those passengers in need of special assistance. Cripples! <laughs> Simple, honest, direct language. There's no shame attached to the word cripple that I can find in any dictionary. No shame attached to it. In fact, it's a word used in Bible translations. Jesus healed the cripples. Doesn't take seven words to describe that condition. <laughs> we don't have any cripples in this country anymore. We have the physically challenged. <laughs> Is that a grotesque enough evasion for you? How about differently abled? I've heard them call that differently abled. You can't even call these people handicapped anymore. They'll say, we're not handicapped, we're handicapable. <laughs> these poor people have been bullshitted by the system into believing that if you change the name of the condition, somehow you'll change the condition. Well, hey, cousin, doesn't happen. <laughs> We have no more deaf people in this country, hearing impaired. No one's blind anymore, partially sighted or visually impaired. We have no more stupid people. Everybody has a learning disorder. <laughs> well, he's minimally exceptional. How would you like to be told that about your child? He's minimally exceptional. <laughs> oh, thank God for that. <laughs> Oh my God. Psychologists actually have started calling ugly people those with severe appearance deficits. <laughs> uh, it's getting so bad that any day now I expect to hear a rape victim referred to as an unwilling sperm recipient. Hey, yo! Oh, man. He's crazy. Unwilling sperm recipient. I like this guy. He's crazy. And we have no more old people in this country. No more old people. We shipped them all away. And we brought in these senior citizens. Isn't that a typically American 20th century phrase? Bloodless, lifeless. No pulse in one of them. A senior citizen. But I've accepted that. I've come to terms with it. I know it's here to stay. We'll never get rid of it. That's what they're going to be called. So I'll relax on that. But the one I do resist, the one I keep resisting, is when they look at an old guy and they'll say, Look at him, Dan. He's 90 years young. Imagine 
imagine the fear of aging that reveals. To not even be able to use the word old to describe someone. To have to use an antonym. And fear of aging is natural. It's universal, isn't it? We all have that. No one wants to get old. No one wants to die. But we do. So we bullshit ourselves. <laughs> I started bullshitting myself when I got to my 40s. As soon as I was in my 40s, I'd look in the mirror and I'd say, Well, I, I guess I'm getting older. <laughs> older sounds a little better than old, doesn't it? Sounds like it might even last a little longer. <laughs> Bullshit, I'm getting old. And it's okay, because thanks to our fear of death in this country, I won't have to die. I'll pass away. <laughs> It's good, that was good. <laughs> or I'll expire like a magazine subscription. <laughs> if it happens in the hospital, they'll call it a terminal episode. The insurance company will refer to it as negative patient care outcome. And if it's the result of malpractice, they'll say it was a therapeutic misadventure. I'm telling you, some of this language makes me want to vomit. Well, maybe not vomit. Makes me want to engage in an involuntary personal protein spill. <laughs> Thank you all. Hey, that's facts, though. That is facts. Oh, oh my God. But that's all for everyone. That passed away when death's making it seem light, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He just passed away, but he, he died. I heard ah, right. He's just trying to make the, the term sound uh, yeah. uh, uh, lighter. I heard that was when they say it transitions to the next phase of life. Yeah, the transition. Ah, oh, man. Someone dies in my friend, they be like, he transitioned into Chapter Invisible. <laughs> you know what they call it? I swear to God, they say that. No, actually? Yeah, you got made it up. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, I know you, they call uh, the new thing, like, for transgender, because that's become, like, a, you know, yeah. kind of derogatory. They say, trans, like, oh, I'm just transitioning right now. I'm in my tra transitioning phase from one <laughs> gender to another. That's true. When he starts saying that, I'm getting And say everything started getting softer from generation, I immediately thought what, that. What, 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 what do you mean? You know, you get hot. Yeah, this shit's stupid. It's <laughs> stupid. We can't even say he or she no more. They try to get out of Can't even say, dude. Gender is just like they're, they're just gender's a choice, dude. Like whatever you identify as, it's like as, your age. That your age is a choice too, huh? Get whatever, out of this guy. Whatever you identify as, that's what you're going to be. You can be whatever you want in life. All right. So, if I want to, if I want, I like, am Batman. I identify <laughs> as the national champion of the NCAA. Get a cream pie to this guy. Whatever, whatever oh. you identify. Oh. As, oh. as No, I, I love it. I was being sarcastic. Yeah, so, yeah, just for any viewers. I know you were. That's what's again. Cream pie. For any of your viewers out there, be like, Ross, you're an idiot. Ross, we, you, you, Ross, you never rock. I was using being sarcastic for some of you idiots in the comment section. Well, man, I didn't have any more videos of George. I, 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 it's interesting, it's interesting to watch. I, I really enjoyed this. Song. Get a load of this guy is an idiomatic expression that can be either used to acknowledge a witty remark made by another person or poke fun at the complacency of such remark. You are using that incorrectly. Mm. I know, I know, I'm just kidding, guys. Yes. Was you serious. are disgusting. No, I know, I know, I know. But you know, hey. it still sounds weird, though. Get a load of this guy. I think how you look at it. Get a load of this guy. I know, it's just funny. I just, when people say this that. This is a good vid, though. Us and our cream pie filled up. All right, I'm all right, we're out of here. <laughs>